harbour after tip-off, but no arrests have been made. And the ANC Women's League says it's still pursuing its dream of having a woman president for the ruling party. Well, the pandemic has had some brutal consequences for businesses. Many have been forced to close, while others are only operating partially and revenue has been affected. So how can we help women entrepreneurs bounce back? The Franchise Association of South Africa plans to tackle some of these questions at this year's conference set down for later this month. Let's speak now to Petunia Sibanyoni. She's from the association. Petunia, a very good afternoon. Thanks so much for your time. And I'm so glad to see a particular focus and honing in on female entrepreneurs and what's going on with them in, in in the midst of this pandemic what are the stories you're hearing thank you so much for having me this afternoon um FASA particularly um we are currently a transformed organization um if you look at myself as a current chairperson and the previous chair Connor Grengre and the incoming one there's quite a lot of focus on on getting women to become entrepreneurs and as you may know that, you know, women are quite um, resilient. Mm. And us as women, we really focus on, on something that we want to do. And FASA has been in the over 42 years, being in the franchise industry, quite crafted the winning elements of um, small business development, entrepreneurship and job creation. So the conference that we'll be having will be focusing on, on women specifically, because currently, we at least have over 30% of women who are either franchisors mm. or franchisees in the 14 business sectors that we cut across. Mm. So we'll be looking at the impact of COVID that it has had and, and most sadly also the looting effect that has happened. Mm. To just take a, a step at what, what challenges have women faced, but most importantly, what are the strengths and some of the innovative elements that they've um, brought into the fore to ensure that they survive during this um, um, pandemic? Um, the Lionesses of um, Africa has done a survey where they'll be sharing um, some of the stats in terms of how women are quite confident that they'll be able to bounce back um, mm -hmm. before the economy was uh, performing just before the yeah. pandemic. And also what we are going to be doing, because as far as we collaborate with quite a lot of key stakeholders in the industry, we're going to be having some powerful um, women speakers that come from the Consumer Goods Council, from yeah. the SAUBC, and also not just local speakers as well, but this conference is also going to focus on Africa as well as the global um, impact. We're also going to be bringing in um, some women from um, international franchisors as well to basically just focus on how as women um, yeah. other entrepreneurs can learn around the resilience of being able to oh. um, do quite well despite the challenges mm. of the pandemic. Well, Petunia, I want to know from you, what, what can you tell us about how uh, female entrepreneurs have actually been impacted so far? You mentioned the looting and COVID-19 has been going on for well over uh, a year now. What are some of the, the, the impacts you're aware of um, on, on these female entrepreneurs? So if, if I look at um, mostly female entrepreneurs around the, the safest um, industries, you know, if you remember with the start of lockdown, there was quite a period where there was a complete lockdown where those um, could not operate. So there was a lot of um, business opportunities um, lost for them. They had to shut down. The ones that are also in the restaurant industry as well, um, the impact of the alcohol ban has really also affected the turnovers that they would have um, mm. enjoyed. So what um, obviously they had to do, and also with the help of franchisors as well, um, assisting their franchisees, is to actually say, let's innovate. Let's move um, um, you know, opportunities to be online. And for instance, those that, that are on mm. our real estate, they now um, move to, into online viewing of properties so that you don't have to go and visit the homes and have an impact mm. around COVID. So those are some of the, the, the lockdown has really set an impact. And more recently, the looting as well, besides the one that were affected in malls and they lost um, either equipment or, or damage to their stock, etc. Others had to, for the safety of their employees and customers, had to shut down to ensure that once everything has stabilized, um, that happens. But I must say that um, from a FASA perspective, we've had quite a, a, a successful engagements 
firstly with the presidents um, and the minister, as well as the minister of small business development, to really come in as the captains of industry to say, um, what have we learned from what has happened and how are we as an association are going to ensure that all these affected entrepreneurs, they firstly get um, the, the funds um, recovered to them. And also we assist them in terms of how do we apply, for instance, for SASRIA, um, for the riots, etc., okay. so that we give them the support every step of the way, that they are not alone. We are here as an association in collaboration with government and other key stakeholders to assist them in this unfortunate um, yeah. time. Because, as you can imagine, we were still looking at the COVID impact. Now we have to um, yes. also look at the looting effect looting. as well. All right, Petrina, before we get to our next question, my technical team is just asking me to tilt your screen towards you a little bit, please, because we, we are missing your chin <laughs> in your picture. Okay, I think that's going to be a little bit better. I think they're happy with that. So, so you know, we do speak about the, the impacts of, of COVID and the impacts of the looting, but let's take it just, let, let's go back a little bit to, to before all of this had happened, Petrina, and just the general state of female entrepreneurs in South Africa. Obviously, these incidents and, and what has happened since then has actually actually added an extra layer of, of challenge, but, but in general, the state and the opportunities afforded to female entrepreneurs in South Africa, where were we before all of this hit? And is it really a thing of the past or have we learned some lessons and we find that maybe the silver lining to COVID is that now we can specifically give them the, the much needed attention that they needed? So I, I must be honest that, um, you know, with the focus on, on women, I'll particularly um, talk about the oil industry where I've spent over 12 years with Shell. So with uh, Women in Energy and also collaborating with the Department of Energy around the Lucas Fuels Charter, we were actually able to appoint um, women to own and operate their own service stations and also formed a collaboration with the funders, the likes of the National Empowerment Fund. Um, in my tenure, I can proudly say that we are able to um, on board about four um, female entrepreneurs. And the, the one that is quite um, a, a biggest achievement, I think, is the one where um, this lady is owning an ultra city, which is the largest mm. that um, Shell has had. Mm. And they've made an impact um, in the media and construction industry. And now they are trailblazing in the oil industry. So I think there's many successes that are there. And I think other sectors can definitely learn from that, that um, there are female entrepreneurs, they are there. And also, um, what we have done quite well is to ensure that we, we tap on already existing female entrepreneurs that are doing well mm -hmm. and partnering them up with the ones that are starting up mm -hmm. as mentors, just to showcase to them, this is how we have walked the journey. This is a kind of like the technical competencies that you require to be able to fare in this industry as well. Because mm. as women, we don't want to be seen to be only operating in the sort of catering, your restaurant, yes. um, your nail, etc. You know, we also want to um, partake in the technical industries like the oil, the automotive, um, most certainly myself being in the automotive industry now for, for four years. It's something that is a key focus um, for us to be able to bring in other women into the industry and also just also demystify the fact that, um, for instance, automotive is all about manufacturing. There's also retail, which is the dealerships. We don't want women to only be the finance and insurance managers that assist customers mm -hmm. with the financing of their vehicles, Absolutely. but we also want them to own um, dealerships as well and contribute extensively in the entire value chain of the automotive industry. Okay. Um, Six of us ladies, we actually started um, last year during lockdown, what we call women in automotive. And our key role is to be the voice of women in the industry, make it attractive to the ones that are not in the industry. And also we committed our time as well to mentor young women that are in the industry or want to come into the industry. And we find that um, is, is working quite well because people don't know about the industry and they think you have to be like me. I mean, I was daddy's little girl. Mm -hmm. I know a lot about cars. Mm -hmm. My dad was a mechanic and I love sports cars. But it doesn't mean that you have to be a car fanatic to mm -hmm. excel in the um, automotive industry. So it's really to also demystify those and that, you know. Um, and I think, uh, you know, 
Our challenge is not diversity. We can acknowledge diversity. I think our issue is around inclusion, mm -hmm. providing an environment that creates equal participation, but also recognition of women in these industries that have been termed yes. male-dominated. I think we have to get to a point of talking about an industry and not say that it's male-dominated. Well, I'm happy, happy to hear that. I mean, all those, uh, uh, many of them that you've actually mentioned, I'm sure many women haven't even thought of giving it a try. So this conference or this, uh, the, is going to be held virtually on the 25th and 26th of August, Petunia. Who can get involved? How do they get involved? So this conference is actually um, for everyone. Um, we want to showcase that franchising is quite a successful business format compared to someone who starts their own business and is independent. So we are looking into someone that are already in the industry, whether we are a franchisor, a franchisee, or a supplier, or because of the impact of COVID as well. We are finding quite a lot of people that have been retrenched are looking for business opportunities and how easy it is to come into a franchising where um, it's been tried and tested so we are going to also be sharing about um, business opportunities that exist in the franchising space as well. We're also going to be having economists as well as futurists and also other industry body associations. So if you want to know everything there is to know about franchising, we invite everyone for these opportunities. And it's going to be taking place over two days. Um, it's virtual. And during the same time, most franchisors have taken up packages to showcase their franchise opportunities and how they can support you as well. And the good thing as well, um, this conference is sponsored by APSA as, as a financer. So we're also looking at opportunities when you want to come into the industry, how do you get access to funding and also how do you get access to transactional banking? So it's a 360 degree uh, conference that focuses on franchising across um, all, all spheres of being in the franchising industry. Fantastic. And I hope that many, many people are going to take advantage of this. It's as fast as Franchising in Africa conference. And uh, it sounds amazing if you really, really want to take a stab at it. Why not? What have you got to lose? Thanks very much, Petunia uh, Sibanyoni there. And let me just tell you, you can visit www.fasa.co.za.